They're back and better than ever. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we learned from Jonas Brothers' Chasing Happiness documentary. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at the most interesting and surprising facts revealed in the Jonas Brothers Amazon Prime documentary, Chasing Happiness. Number 10. When they started out, their family went broke. The Jonas Brothers were raised by their mother Denise Jonas and their father Paul Kevin Jonas Sr., both of whom instilled a love of music in the boys at a young age. You know, in our household, it wasn't no singing at the table. It was encouraged to sing at the table. So when they realized their sons had the potential to make it as musicians, they invested in them to the tune of more than $90,000. My dad at this point had put $90,000 of his life savings, essentially our college fund, into the band, maxed out his credit cards, and had no money. Like, we were done. However, when the Jonas Brothers were dropped by Columbia Records and their father found himself without a job, the family was suddenly in serious financial trouble. It hit when we were already at a low and took us even lower. They were forced to move to a smaller home where Kevin, Joe, Nick, and their younger brother Frankie shared a single bedroom. The Jonas Brothers became the family's primary source of income, and Joe later recalled that it was, quote, a lot of pressure for somebody that age. We'd lost our home. We lost our friends and our social life. Everything they knew for 10 years of their life, gone. Number nine, Nick is the one who suggested they reunite. When the Jonas Brothers split in 2013, few imagined that they'd ever get back together. I think Nick said it casually, like, I really miss performing with you guys. And I don't even think I really heard him, I just was like, yeah, cool, and then kept, <laughs> kept on moving. This included Joe Jonas, who later scoffed at Nick's suggestion that they reunite, claiming that there was, quote, no way in hell he'd ever share a stage with his brothers again. We started the conversation with, I'll do this if we can have fun together. This didn't deter the youngest Jonas brother, who kept pushing Joe and Kevin to reconsider. In the film, Nick remarks that he still missed having his brothers on stage with him, even after finding solo success. We spent the last year traveling the world together and really just reconnecting. Nick's perseverance was the kick the band needed to set aside their differences and get back together. I really want to have a second chance with them so I can enjoy every moment with my brothers and I can smile more. Number eight, Joe feels like his solo career was a failure. Following years of chart-topping albums and international success as a member of the Jonas Brothers, Joe Jonas attempted a solo career. And I was really trying to prove myself, probably to my brothers, but to everyone out there that I can do it without Kevin and Nick. His debut album, Fast Life, peaked at number 15 on the Billboard 200 chart, but only managed to sell 40,000 copies. In Chasing Happiness, the middle Jonas brother discusses how this affected him and reveals he was disappointed with the album's overall performance. In my mind's at the time, like, it was my first failure. I think it was really tough for me because I felt like I can't do anything without my brothers. Like, it was embarrassing. Joe Jonas would go on to form the pop group DNCE in 2015, whose debut single Cake by the Ocean cracked the top 10 in a number of different countries. DNCE allowed me to be as wild and as free as I could possibly be. I was able to dress in whatever crazy outfits and change my hair color every week and just really, like, live it. Despite this, Joe Jonas is clearly still peeved that Fast Life was a failure. Number seven, their record deal caused some controversy in their church. Once we started doing our own thing in music, there were people starting to speak about our dad in, in a negative way. Growing up, the Jonas Brothers were fixtures at their local New Jersey church. They were well known in the congregation, in part because their father was the pastor. This ultimately proved problematic for Paul Kevin Jonas Sr., as some within the church criticized him for allowing his children to sing non-Christian music. I think there was some judgment on us for not being a Christian band. Singing about girls started to become, like, a bit of an issue. According to Nick, singing about girls and relationships started to become an issue and bothered people in the church. I started to realize our dream that we were chasing freaked a lot of people out in church. You know, it's a totally different lifestyle than I think they expected a pastor's son to be in. Due to the intense backlash, Paul Jonas was forced to resign as pastor and the family was forced to move to the small town of Little Falls. In Joe's words, they felt like their world was crashing over them. And they just started this whole platform to kind of get my dad removed. Number six, Nick and Joe didn't want anything to do with Kevin's reality show. 
One of Chasing Happiness's biggest revelations was the tumultuous relationship that Nick and Joe had for years with older brother Kevin. They felt that he was holding them back musically and that he was more focused on his family than he was his guitar playing. I think there was um, moments that Nick and I wanted to do our own thing and we felt like your focus was not in it anymore. The pot officially boiled over when Kevin and his wife Danielle agreed to do the reality show Married to Jonas. While Kevin was excited to finally have his own project, Nick and Joe were less thrilled about the prospect of inviting fans into their personal lives. Our whole life was a closed door meeting and Kevin invited cameras into that meeting finally and we felt like he was going to air out a lot of our shit that we didn't want people to know about. In the documentary, Kevin reveals that the brothers really didn't want anything to do with the show. We didn't like the idea that the reality show could dictate who we were. And to watch it every Sunday was not fun for us. Number five, Joe and Nick did a Jonas Brothers concert without Kevin after the breakup. Following their breakup, Joe and Nick played a series of concerts without Kevin. What I was told was the radio station said, if you don't play these shows, we will never play the Jonas Brothers or any Jonas individually on the radio again. They agreed to do the shows in part because the promoters had threatened them if they didn't play any Jonas Brothers songs, but later expressed to Kevin that they felt he wasn't prioritizing the band anymore. I think it's because we felt you were holding us back. That's the truth. However, while they'd initially inform their big brother that they wouldn't play any Jonas Brothers songs, that's exactly what they wound up doing. The entire set was them singing all the Jonas Brothers songs together. With tears in his eyes, Kevin called it the hardest moment of his entire life. The conversation, which takes place during a drinking game, is one of the most candid in the entire documentary. All the big hits, all the big moments, and I'm just not there. Number four, Camp Rock was originally supposed to be a solo project for Joe. 2008's Camp Rock was instrumental in the Jonas Brothers' rise to superstardom, as the Disney Channel flick and its sequel gave them immeasurable exposure in a key demographic. Every time I think I'm closer to the heart of what it means to know just who I am. However, the original plan was to have Joe appear in the film alone. This didn't sit well with Paul Jonas, who felt that splitting the boys up was a bad idea. My dad called the president of Disney Channel and said, what if instead of just Joe, it was a band. To ensure he got his way, Papa Jonas called the Disney Channel's president and suggested that instead of Joe appearing as a solo artist, he appear as part of a band. Disney's head honcho agreed, and the rest is history. really enjoyed myself. I mean, Kevin and I were barely in it, but if you're 13 years old and you get to go make a movie, it was incredible. Number three, they regret doing their Disney Channel show Jonas. You regret anything? Yeah, of course. Regret like so much shit all the time. The drinking game Kevin, Joe, and Nick play in Chasing Happiness also reveals how they felt about their short-lived Disney Channel show Jonas. Nick was particularly candid, stating that he felt the show was an overall bad decision and stunted their growth as a band. Season two of Jonas. It's a big regret. We shouldn't have done that. It really stunted our growth, you know? I feel like it was just a bad move. Kevin had a similar opinion, remarking that, quote, the show was not good. While Joe quipped, quote, I didn't feel like it was us anymore. It felt young and we were becoming adults. Despite taking home multiple Teen Choice Awards, the show received mostly negative reviews and painted the Jonas Brothers in an unflattering light. It was not on brand for us as like the band that we were becoming with songs we were writing. It was almost like two very different identities. Number two, they were really hurt and upset about being mocked for their purity rings. At the onset of their career, the Jonas Brothers were known as much for their promise rings as they were for their music. Well, we don't want to be selling sex to little girls anymore. Rings stay on! Having grown up in a church community, purity rings never seemed out of place to the boys. However, when they started to blow up, the rings caused them to develop a reputation as the quote, cookie cutter boy band brothers. I mean, they weren't far off, that's for sure. In the documentary, they discuss how painful it was for them to endure constant jabs about the ring. And that was not who we were. Like, it was just something that we did when we were young kids, but we wore the rings through the first bit of the band starting to explode. At that point, it was already too late because it was in the media. Nick called the entire thing embarrassing, while Kevin struggled with the fact that it was all the media would focus on. It was embarrassing to be aware of this joke in real life with people. When I would go to a sporting event, and they'd put me on the Jumbotron or us or whatever, they would boo us. Seeing as how the brothers are now married to a trio of talented and beautiful women, it would appear the last laugh belongs to them. 
Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I passed out in the hospital room because I couldn't seem like all hooked up to these wires. It was like a really life-shifting moment for everybody. When he met Miley, I think that kid's head exploded. I became a target. Kids were cruel at that age. They would, they would call me gay, they would call me fag, they would, you know, call me pisshead. It would break me down. I remember coming home from school and like crying to my parents. The impact of falling in love has made me want to be a better man, a better person, and ultimately made me a better brother. His voice, even then, was absolutely undeniable. You could already tell at 10, he was just that guy. I actually signed him then and there. Number one, they talk about how their 2013 split really happened. It was initiated by Nick. I felt betrayed, I felt lied to, I felt angry, numb. After years of recording, filming, and touring together, the Jonas Brothers called it quits in 2013, and all fans could do was speculate as to the reason for the split. Nick says, as you guys know, like, things haven't been the same, and the Jonas Brothers should be no more. Well, in Chasing Happiness, the truth finally emerged. Due to a growing sense that they were no longer in it for the right reasons, Nick called a band meeting and stated that he felt the band was over and that they should no longer continue performing together. It was not, my heart's not in it, and I want to be real with you, as band members and brothers, this is where I'm at, it was, the band is over, I want to go do stuff without you guys, and I've made up my mind. This came as a shock to Kevin and Joe, who were honest about feeling betrayed and incredibly hurt. Joe went on to say that it was a dark time for all of them. For the full story, you'll just have to watch Chasing Happiness on Amazon Prime Video. What hurt the most is that it came from Nick. Because he is my best friend. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.